Did you know that there are streamers who use dual PC setups for their Twitch and YouTube streams? For some, that's overkill. For me, I say that's child play. This is the 10 PC plus some servers streaming setup. Unlimited power! <laughs> That's not even the whole multi-view, that's just all I can show at one time. Ironically, setting this up has been the reason that I haven't been streaming for, well, months now. During our streams around Christmas and at the start of the year, I started building the vision for the next phase of my studio. And once I get an idea in my head, I really can't keep going until I've achieved it. The journey has been quite a mess, however. The core idea for this revamp is a blend of my original ambitious dreams for this studio whenever we were first building it, which we just couldn't achieve during the short time we had to build before I had to get back to work, not to mention the limited budget while buying a freaking house, and a lot of inspiration from the likes of the Sushi Dragon on Twitch. He's a cool dude. I'll probably be interviewing him soon, so subscribe and don't miss that. My entire goal with this studio was to have basically all of my shooting setups as ready to go as possible. Other than when using the big cinema camera, I wanted zero time wasted setting up lights, camera angles, and so on. I wanted to leverage the absurd hoard of gear that I had acquired over the last decade of YouTubing and ditch the rest to be as efficient as possible. I mostly got there. We had cameras and lights mounted and ready to rock on the workbench, the main camera and lighting on the desk, and then the retro corner set up to try to emulate the old retro room vibe of the apartment studio. But once I started streaming more, I quickly ran into a bottleneck, movement. I could easily pick up and go and stream and record from any of the sets, but on top of me never having updated stream layouts and details on each individual PC when I wanted to, I had no freedom to move between the sets. We just started having streams where I'd want to start just chatting at my desk and then do some Pokemon unboxings or gaming over here at the retro corner and show some cool DIY thing over at the workbench and trying to flip any of that together on the fly just didn't work. After spending a few hours on eBay gawking at the nightmare of SDI broadcast gear, gin lock, and a bunch of other stuff I really didn't want to convert to, I picked up the phone and called our good friends over at Bird Dog in Australia. The solution had been right in front of me the entire time. I had covered it for years. I interviewed the CEO of the company that made it. I still had review samples of products that use it. The solution was NDI. NDI stands for Network Device Interface, and it is designed to stream audio and video over a network. It can do high bandwidth encoding, compressed HEVC and H.264 encodes, 4K, 60fps, an absurd amount of audio channels, and sends separate preview and program views at the same time, can be used in multiple places at once, and now with NDI Bridge, it can even go over the internet as of the latest release. They even have mobile apps to use for you know your phone as a webcam. That's how I had a view of my 3D printer at the start of the feed. This was how I was gonna unify this whole setup at last. But if I use plain old NDI, I'd still be in a similar position where every set needs a PC running a bunch of cameras into a capture card and all of that madness. And I do have quite a few quad HDMI capture cards at this point from the likes of Blackmagic, Elgato, and Magewell, but the cost and the PCIe lane requirements really start to stack up. That's where Bird Dog comes in. Bird Dog makes dedicated NDI encoding and decoding hardware, dedicated NDI cameras, uh, controllers, and more. They make the hardware that goes to Newtek's software. It just so happens that the people over at Bird Dog are amazing. In exchange for three slivers of my soul and one of my rare CRT monitors, they leveled me up to brand ambassador and sent me an insane care package. We're talking 11 Flex 4K NDI inputs, plus the one I already had, uh, and the output I already had, two 4 P4K PTZ cameras, two PF120 box cameras, and their crazy PTZ controller thing. This is an insane amount of gear, but it might just be enough. But of course, this opened up a new problem. I have a small 10 gig network, you know, for, for all of my video editing PCs to access my bulk storage, but I didn't have the networking infrastructure to add this many devices streaming video to my network. Fine people over at Netgear sent me over one of their new M4250 AV line network switches. This thing is a beast. 24 PoE plus ethernet ports, two non-PoE ports, 
plus four SFP plus 10 gig uplinks to connect back to my 10 gigabit network. This was crucial for two reasons. All of the bird dog NDI gear is PoE, which means I'm able to drastically reduce the amount of cable clutter and mess by just running everything off of one ethernet cable instead of a bunch of power connectors and things like that. Plus this is a massive switch that still has up to a 40 gigabit uplink to the rest of my network. No one of these devices, even the 4K PTZ cameras, will use more than a gigabit's worth of bandwidth at a time. But if I wanna stream a bunch of these sources at once, like I mentioned, well then we need a massive pipe to my endpoint. This gets me there. Insane studio setups like this would simply not be possible without sponsors like Nerd or Die. Nerd or Die has supported the channel for years and they are here to support you in building your next awesome stream layout. In fact, the spring sale was such a big deal that they want to keep giving you great deals on your layouts. And so for a limited time, they are offering a buy one, get one half off sale. Any orders over $30 or more, if you type in coupon code BOGO, B-O-G-O at checkout, you will get 50% off your order. For those of you who like to mix and match elements from different layouts. Again, that's BOGO at checkout at eboswax.gg slash nerd or die or link in the video description. The only thing standing in my way was about a thousand feet of Cat6A wiring that needed ran and Oh, so many cable terminations. My hands were bruised and swollen for weeks after this. This was by far the slowest part of the journey just because it was so tedious and disruptive, and it's part of why things took as long as they did, but it was well worth it. 14 different camera angles, and still growing by the way, I'm not done adding yet, more than 10 screen captures, plus console captures, and whatever handheld solution I end up coming with, I'm maybe even adding a 360 cam. This is a lot of video. A good chunk of the camera angles are handled by the Flex 4K inputs. I'll link my original review down below, but these take HDMI input and output full fat NDI over the network via the Ethernet jack. They're power over Ethernet, so basically they're just like HDMI video inputs, but for your network. Wild stuff. I've got my main A7C, some Panasonic G7s, and a Sony A5100, plus more room as I keep building. These were the simplest to set up, and the only thing I have to turn on is the cameras. And like I mentioned, this is not the entirety of what I have. I don't even have all of my sources added here, but I have even more sources in vMix, and this isn't even everything at the moment. Dear loud. More camera angles and the screen captures are handled by the updated NDI Tools 5 and the NDI Screen Capture app. Now, with the latest update, there's actually two apps, NDI Screen Capture and NDI Screen Capture HX. The HX option leverages GPU encoding for H.264 and HEVC and allows for more flexible refresh rates along with the lower bandwidth usage. But they haven't added the ability to also send webcam sources along with your screen capture yet. So while HX is the more modern and probably smarter way to go, I'm I'm sending USB webcams on virtually every computer I want to screen share from, so I'm sticking with the original screen capture app for now. The cool thing here is that the screen and webcams are sent as separate NDI feeds. My only complaint is that it only supports one webcam device at a time. There seems to be a paid app somewhere to send multiple webcams, but that's somewhat unclear on its own. But of course, vMix itself can output a bajillion devices over NDI if I wanted to pay for multiple licenses there, which I'll probably do at some point because that would work fine. Then of course we have the four camera angles from the Bird Dog NDI cameras themselves. Two of these are the PF120 box cameras. They provide 1080p60 video, have optical zoom and autofocus while also being power over ethernet, which is pretty wild. They even work over USB as webcams. Here's a test of that if you want. For this use case, I actually replaced my two overhead camera angles with these bad boys. The retro set where I did Pokemon openings and product unboxings was previously using a Panasonic G85, which had no usable autofocus and was very dark and noisy. This is a significant upgrade and wider angle. On the workbench side, I had the Sony A5100 mounted overhead, which was awesome performance wise, but I had to turn it on and off and the HDMI port was super loose and always kept coming undone. Both of these overhead cams are now basically left on indefinitely because they're only really activated and being used in sending video when the computer accesses the NDI feed. That's something I really dig about NDI. I have two of their P4K PTZ cameras. These allow me full control over X and Y movement as well as zooming in, meaning I can get the perfect angle anywhere in my studio. The cameras are controlled via remote, the controller unit, or API access, meaning I could set it up, map presets to my stream deck once I get around to it. But a recent update just gave the P4K automatic body tracking. So I can enable that in cam control, where I also color grade the cams, by the way, and then have them follow me around the studio. My studio is a little too busy for this to be a perfect experience every time, but it is still really impressive and super handy as a one-man show kind of operation. 
To control it all, I have a couple options. The Elgato Stream Deck, of course, allows me to switch scenes and do all my usual management in OBS, but I wanted something that could move with me. In previous streams, we were experimenting with me bringing a phone, running touch portal around, and wireless keypads, and I'll have a video deep dive on the workflows for each of those coming soon, but that's where a new solution was desirable. Enter the Twiddler. This thing honestly sucks to get set up and to use. Like, so much of it is just way too obtuse and dumb, but it's seemingly the best solution for this kind of workflow. You may have seen it in the Sushi Dragons or BB Jess's streams. It's just a wireless keypad shaped for one-handed use, like a Wiimote or a PlayStation Move controller or a VR controller. Thumbstick and modifier keys on one side, keyboard on the other. This allows me to be mobile throughout the studio and still control sources and camera angles. Or at least it will once I'm done setting it up. While the cable work and planning honestly took way longer than I expected, the overall process went fairly smoothly. The Netgear switch makes managing VLANs easy and has pre-configured profiles for Dante for audio, NDI, and things like that. Admittedly, my experience with managed networks uh, is very limited, and my greater network seems to not be optimized for VLANs, so it's not set up perfectly right now uh, at this exact moment, but it does what it needs to and stays very quiet in my rack with configurable fan curves. I love that aspect. The only big hurdle left to solve was audio. If I was smart, I would have just left my existing audio setups in place, just forwarding the audio interfaces of each setup over NDI via software or line in jacks on the Flex 4K units at each station, but I am not a smart person. Instead, I wanted to try to unify the audio setup into one place as well, with audio processing, easy routing, and so on. PreSona stepped up to the plate for this, but that'll have to be in part two, because I have a couple hundred feet of XLR cable to cut and run now as well, and my hands need a break. We'll have more videos covering this setup coming very soon and how all the different PCs get utilized and so on, so get subscribed so you don't miss that. Shouts out to BirdDog, Netgear, PreSonus for the incredible hookups. Follow me on Twitch for more streams coming soon, I hope, and remember, be kind, rewind.